Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we had a look at Jan Rack's Dragon Discharge, Fire Ratio Discharge, uh, first uh, discovered by Eric Dollard. And uh, I'm going to take a look at this slow-mo, which was recorded by myself earlier this week at 240 frames per second and this will be playing at 30 frames per second so it's an eight times slow motion and then we're going to have a look at some of the still frames and then look at how this compares to coherent matter traveling waves coming from Lenner experiments. So you get the idea, and if I pause this now, you will see that um, sometimes it's producing a rather nice symmetrical type discharge here, and at other times it is producing, again, another type of symmetrical discharge, and then all the way back at the end here, I think we've got another nice symmetrical discharge. Not that one. Uh, relatively. The one before that. Anyway, um, what I'm really interested to show you here is uh, these type of discharges where, uh, or rather the nature of the discharge, where you see it comes out really rather straight. It's really rather straight. But as it builds up, it starts to uh, produce these kind of fern-like fronds and with these Curlian type photography substructures. But it is producing kink instabilities here. And this is where the discharge in the plasma channel gets distorted by the magnetic field of the plasma channel itself. And this is one way that it is considered that ball lightning can form. However, in this instance, uh, it's essentially a discharge channel out to, say, here. Uh, but it's not a resonant uh, discharge in that it's not continuously pumping in both more charge and more uh, helicity into the process so it kind of like you can imagine this could kink instability uh, tear off and produce a structure but it doesn't really get a chance to but this um, also what you can see here is that it's not regular it just is not regular uh, there's variable kink instability kind of shapes along it so if we go to another one say over here it's starting off down the bottom here and it's pulling out and you can see a kink instability is forming here this is fairly straight and then as it dies back you can see a very very twisted uh, remnants of the discharge here you go to another one say over here um, and go through this and you see very kinky here very kinky but it's not regular it's not regular in no sense is this a regular discharge and the very much difference or rather the big difference between this and what you see with the coherent matter traveling waves as I call them in the Vega experiments of Hank Curian and, and David Boutier is that they are very regular and that they are traveling waves these are kind of like static discharge arcs there's a unipolar arc type affair coming off this single electrode here and they're not traveling so much as they're growing and then twisting in place and so we'll have a look at another example here so it starts off fairly nice straight channels and then you can start to see the kink instabilities forming here getting even more kinky and there you can see it's all twisted up at the end there but essentially, they move into their discharge and hold their position. You can actually see a little bit of twist right there on the end, and you can see this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to revisit um, Yan, and I'm going to take a couple of different cameras, one that can film at 480 frames a second rather than the 240 frames that this was filmed at uh, with a very good resolution. And I'll also take the Sony Alpha, and that'll be enable 
uh, much higher fidelity. So this is 1080p. We'll be able to film at uh, four times the pixels at 4K, but with half the frame rate. But it'll have four times the color space, uh, and it'll have 64 times the colors, and four times the dynamic range. So with captures with that, we should be able to delve into the structure of the plasma, which is not normally revealed in these um, videos. And so we'll be able to understand the form inside this um, plasma as it's reaching its peak. And also, we can actually capture at 30 frames per second, all the way up to 50 megapixels. But even at 16 by 9, which will be 33 megapixels, that'll have 16 times the pixels, four times the color space, and 64 times the colors, and four times the dynamic range. So uh, what that will allow us to do is be able to really tease out structures in these and substructures and the, the fractality of it. Also, I will be able to do extremely short exposures and ideally we will get a um, very short exposure of the full discharge occasionally uh, when we hit the right uh, instance. And uh, so look forward to some really, really um, groundbreaking studies of this type of discharge. I would also like to look for strange radiation emissions from these things, uh, and that will come down the line. If it's a source of strange radiation, it'll allow us to um, study statistically more examples of those type of emissions, and so and, and potentially use it as a method of um, evaluating shielding technology. So I'm just going to play this through, and then I want to show a comparison of this to um, the normal um, things that we've been sharing in the past, the coherent matter traveling waves. Okay, so compare these kind of discharges here, like this one, and the structure of the uh, collapsed discharge. Uh, so if I go in here to 100%, maybe 200% here, uh, in, rather, okay. Uh, 
and we look at the resulting squiggles of some of these things like so these squiggles right compare that to these coherent matter traveling waves so this is coherent matter as far as I'm concerned that is born in one of the fractal substructures of the ball lightning the ball lightning breaks up to a degree and one of the coherent matter structures comes out and you can see that this is not a static thing uh, like this is uh, in terms of it stays in roughly the same space area because when you capture it on video you can see it's traveling and what you're seeing here is 60 frames a second and uh, one sixtieth of a frame so the coherent matter has traveled and it is spiraling around um, uh, as it travels in this direction so it's really it's exposing the film again here I have connected four frames together to show the overall track and you can see this is very regularly spaced very regularly structured um, and here is the disruption of the coherent matter and releasing the coherent matter wave and there's actually a patent I think uh, by the Max Planck Institute that shows something similar but actually obviously doesn't show a video of it um, but here we are seeing these things on video this is in a Dave Boutlier experiment where they had uh, that he had two cameras placed so you can see this side of the electrode here and the back side of the electrode here and so you can see that uh, 1A trace here scaled and rotated and then 1B trace here it's the same trace viewed from the the front side and the back side and you can see this helical kind of pattern here it's very regular in both cameras this is not this and lastly this rather lovely one where you can see uh, the counter structure that is allowing for this to orbit around as a pair uh, but you only see the counter structure as it's coming towards the camera so uh, that tells you something about potentially how these structures are able to orbit around the center of the azimuth of this uh, direction of travel okay so that is essentially what i wanted to show you today uh, thank you to jan rack for letting me observe his um, dragon discharge his fire ratio uh, fractal discharge and uh, here it is this is not this this is not this it's not a coherent matter traveling wave however it does show the process of uh, kink instabilities in a plasma discharge channel so this kind of thing that Paul Collock was referring to uh, when he had his 1973 model of ball lightning where you had a discharge between uh, two electrodes and you inject helicity and it produces kinks and the kinks tear off and produce magnetic loops that was the idea I think it does it slightly different that's my view so thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video